my, uh, I would like to move on now to the uh, second speaker. Uh, I would like to introduce him. Our second speaker is Dr. Mohammad Rali from Doha. Um, he's professor of Islam uh, and medical ethics at Hama bin Khalifa University. Uh, he holds degrees in uh, Islamic studies, both from Al Azhar and Leiden University. Uh, and he was faculty member in Leiden until 2013. Uh, he's the co-founder of the Journal of Islamic Ethics, as you will know, and he has co-founded the MA uh, in Implied Islamic Ethics. And we will hear um, papers from various of this program in the next panel, I believe. Um, so uh, there's a, um, I would like to announce we organize this paper a bit differently because Dr. Rali has to leave. So if you want to ask questions, you have like 10 minutes, 10, 50 minutes, let's say, uh, to ask questions uh, right after uh, this paper presentation. Uh, this unfortunately has Dr. Rali has to leave and this is why we have this slide change in the program. Okay, Dr. Ali, the floor is yours. You have Thank you so much, Dr. Peter. And uh, uh, my due thanks uh, to Dr. Matez Al Khatib and all the colleagues in the center in Kyle uh, who organized and took care of this um, activity. Uh, 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 Mona, will you please give me the opportunity to share the the PowerPoint because I cannot share now. And and my apologies for uh, this inconvenience in the in the arrangement of the session, because I had a teaching commitment um, at four o'clock, uh, but I didn't realize this when we were drafting the program of the conference. So, um, uh, but I still have to stick to my teaching commitment as well. So that's why. So my apologies for that. Okay. <clears throat> can you can you see my uh, presentation no, no, now? Yes, yes, yes. No. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so uh, um, I will uh, um, uh, speak about the, the the concept of the virtuous physician or al tabib al fadl. Uh, I have to say in the beginning that this is of course uh, a work in progress. Uh, I'm working parallel on the paper with uh, so many other things that I have to do these days. So um, your uh, critical remarks and suggestions for improvement are more than welcome. Those who cannot do this now, they can uh, always send me an email. Here is my email. Uh, uh, so uh, I, I have also um, scrapped some of the parts of the uh, my presentation because of the time limit. I thought if I will include the modern discussions, it will just be too much. So I will focus more on the classical discussions and maybe at the end uh, with the concluding remarks, I can say something about how um, the similarities and differences with the modern discussions. So, the main question that I will uh, try to address in this uh, short presentation is what makes the physician virtuous? What makes uh, a physician entitled to the description al-tabib, al-fadl, or the virtuous physician? Uh, my thesis here is that uh, in the Islamic tradition, three main characteristics should be present. And when we have the three of them, then the physician can be duly and properly described as the virtuous physician. These three characteristics are number one, uh, having or developing the moral character of virtuous person Sh should first and foremost be uh, virtuous as a person, as an individual, like anyone else. And here the classical discussions were very much um, uh, modeled and following the way of the Greek discussions in this regard, especially the standard Plato platonic trichotomy, as we will explain it, and the interrelatedness between uh, body or, or, or the um, um, uh, corporeal parts, the organs of the body or temperance, a uh, temperament of the body, misajul um, badan, um, and powers of the psyche, wakua and nafs, will explain it. The second component is about uh, the, the virtuous plus, uh, the, the moral character of virtuous uh, per physician that should do more than the virtuous physician. We will also explain about that. 
And the third point is uh, professionalism. Of course, uh, the item of professionalism is a big discussion in the modern time. When we speak about the virtuous physician, like the works of Billy Green and others, but uh, um, in the classical discussions, it was included there, and we will speak about its moral relevance. Why is it included in the uh, basic components of virtuousness of the physician? And I will end up with uh, some quick uh, critical uh, concluding remarks. So let's start with the uh, first uh, item. Uh, about the, 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 or the first component of virtuousness of the physician, which is the moral character of a virtuous person. Uh, uh, quite standard, uh, you have heard this uh, throughout uh, today and yesterday uh, about the platonic trichotomy, the, the um, three components or the three faculties or powers of the psyche or the three types of the souls, depending on uh, who, who is talking and which book uh, we are addressing. Uh, the three main powers, the rational power, the animal power, the vegetable or carnal uh, um, uh, power. Each of these powers has its own function. So the rational power is the power by which man distinguishes between the right and wrong, uh, uh, the good and bad or evil, etc. Uh, the animal uh, power is the power, uh, the power by which man gets angry and enraged. And the third power is the power by which man desires and lusts for uh, pleasures. What medical works added to that uh, is the seat, the physical seat. Where does this power uh, is placed in the body? So uh, standard again position is that the rational power is seated in the brain. The animal power is seated in the heart, and the vegetable or the kernel power is seated in the liver. Each of these powers is linked to um, one or more basic virtues. Uh, uh, the standard is that wisdom is linked to the rational, courage is linked to the animal, and temperance is linked to the vegetable. In writings, specific writings uh, written by physicians and those who theorized uh, for the medical profession, sometimes they formulate these virtues a little bit differently. So they would, for instance, speak about um, the virtue of al-lubbu um, wal-aqlu wa jawdatu al wa tamyizi wa sihat al-fikri, intelligence, sound reasoning, etc. For the animal power, they would speak about al-hudu wa razana wa qillatu al-hardi wa al-ghayzi, calmness and tranquility. Uh, for the third, uh, it's we uh, use the, the term if uh, directly, the very technical term uh, if. The whole idea is that the person who wants to develop a moral character of a virtuous person uh, should uh, have a good management of these three powers. So each power should uh, um, uh, be managed so, so that it will be moderate. Hmm? Uh, so moderation here is 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 a, a key um, um, a principle or key issue, and the rational power should have control over the other two. And once you do that, you will achieve the virtue of justice, and then you will have the four cardinal uh, virtues or moral uh, values. Once you do this, you are a virtuous person at 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 the level of uh, uh, at the level of uh, uh, persons, not necessarily uh, physicians. So we have a standard platonic trichotomy approach for what a, virtu a virtuous person can be. Uh, in this uh, developing the, the moral character of virtuous person, uh, the writings on, on, on medicine and medical ethics, they stress the interrelationship or interrelatedness between the condition or temperament, the so-called misage of one's body or body's organs and moral character. That's why they are seated in specific parts of the place. So if the heart is physically speaking not in a healthy condition, it means that the faculties uh, of the psyche which are placed in this part will not be functioning properly and vice versa. So when the psyche can affect the body and one's body can affect the um, uh, psyche. When it comes to the physician, uh, they say that uh, this knowledge about the interrelatedness between 
the state or the condition of the psyche or the soul on one hand and that of the body on one hand, they are important for the physician uh, uh, in, 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 in his or her three capacities. The first one, as a person. So the, 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 the physician without this knowledge will not be able to keep himself as, as a fit person physically and psychologically speaking. And if this didn't happen, the harm, the scope of the harm will be much bigger and broader than uh, other normal individuals. Because as a normal individual, if you don't have this balance and this moderation and this harmony between the health condition of the body and that of the psyche, you will be harmed as an individual. But if you don't have this as a, as a physician, you not only as an individual, you will be harmed, but those who need you and who need your um, expertise in order to help and treat the diseases. So th this, this will be a harm for the society, not only for the physician. And then the physician needs this knowledge as a, a medic in his capacity as a medical practitioner in order to be efficient, in order to be successful in his career. He needs this knowledge and to understand the interrelatedness between body on one hand or the temperament of the body, and the faculty of the psyche, and nafs. And the third thing is uh, the, the physician needs this knowledge in his capacity as teacher for future uh, generations. Uh, 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 um, 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 authors or writers in this uh, in this genre, genre would uh, stress uh, strongly stress that teaching the profession of medicine shouldn't be given to anyone because there is a specific nobility for this profession. So it, sh it should be given to those who are eligible exclusively to those who are eligible to that. Those who are eligible in their uh, uh, in their uh, nature and in their morals in their physical structure and in their psychological uh, psychic or psychological powers for instance rohawi in his book on edible tabib he dedicates a distinct chapter entitled fi anna sana'at at-tibb la yasluhu an ya'malaha kullu man iltamasaha not anyone is eligible to be taught uh, uh, medicine, but only those whose nature and morals make them eligible to. So the physician needs this information in order to detect who is eligible to uh, be um, um, a physician and uh, who not. Uh, then we go to the second level, which is the moral character of virtuous physician, not just the virtuous person, but the virtuousness in the specific context of medicine uh, as, as a profession. We see that <clears throat> almost in all the writings related to uh, this issue, uh, whether it is written by those we know that they are Muslim authors, or those who are written by uh, maybe Christians or Jews, um, and those who are written by authors whose religious affiliation we don't know for sure, like a Rohawi, for instance. There is a faith-based moral framework for theorizing the moral character of a virtuous person. They stress that the framework is religious in nature, not necessarily Islamic, but religious in nature. So we have what we can call universal religious morality in this regard. They say that the physician should have a firm belief that this universe <clears throat> has been created by an omnipotent and wise creator. This creator has um, full control over people's health, sickness, life, death, etc. This creator sent messengers uh, to the people in order to inform them about what's beneficial and what's harmful for them in this life, in the hereafter, in world issues, in religious issues. They had a message communicated through scriptures, all this. Uh, uh, and, and they stress that this idea is not only rooted in the religious scriptures, but rooted in the medical tradition itself. So we see uh, some of the writings speak that uh, authoritative Figures like Hippocrates, uh, Galen, Aristotle, Plato, etc., they would introduce them as religiously committed people, people who had strong belief in God, 
and the belief in the marvelous act of God in this universe, they would speak not only about God, but about angels, about friends of God. Uh, it's attributed to Galen, for instance, in some of these writings that Galen argued that the origin of medicine is divine, not, not, not rational and not human. He said that this is what they ascribe to him, that the, the, the art of medicine or the science of medicine is uh, much more complex, too complex to be discovered by human intellect. So it must have um, a divine origin. And then based on this uh, religious framing of the discussions, uh, they would stress a number of uh, medicine-specific values, like, for instance, humility. They say that a physician can, uh, has a higher risk of losing this um, value or this virtue for two possible reasons. The first one is that because of the nobility of medicine and people, people's need uh, for this profession, the physician usually uh, has more access uh, to powerful and authoritative people in the society than other professionals. So uh, because of this access to this uh, elite uh, classes in the society, the physician may disguise the public and they say th this will be a big problem and big moral fall for the physician. The second thing is that when the physician succeeds in treating stubborn diseases that many others couldn't, may have also this ujb or kibr, this self consight and this also shouldn't be the case. And then they would link to the religious framework that the physician should know that the true healer is God, is not the physician, and the physician is just one of the tools of God to realize and actualize uh, this healing. Uh, justice is stressed more, very uh, often in these uh, writings uh, that uh, because uh, uh, people's urgent need to get treated, they may give a lot of money, especially the rich people. They say that the physician should make himself uh, accessible uh, um, equally accessible to both the rich and, and the poor. And again, link this to the faith-based morality, that it is part of shukr al-munim, a concept that we see in philosophical and theological writings, showing gratitude to the benefactor with, with an uppercase B, to God. Fidelity, also the uh, physician is someone who has more access to people's secrets, confidential information, etc., than other professionals and um, uh, he should show uh, um, um, great concern about uh, uh, respecting people's privacy and, and confidentiality. <coughs> and this is part of the amen that he should see <coughs> the profession of medicine as a trust from God, the one who originated this uh, profession. And uh, out of this uh, obligation of the trust, he has to respect people's privacy. The third, and the last um, element of uh, virtuousness of the physician is professionalism. As I mentioned, we have a big discussion in the modern time whether professionalism should be part of that or not. Uh, in the classical discussions uh, in the Islamic tradition, it, it was a, a, a non-issue. Everyone more or less accepts that professionalism is part of this virtuousness of the physician. Why? First of all, because of the interrelatedness between what is physical, what is physical, and and or and what's me medical, and what's moral, we said that the the faculties of the psyche responsible for the moral excellence of the of the person is quite linked to the physical and health condition of the body. So, in order to be a good physician, you have to know not only the health condition of the body, but the knowledge about the moral excellence related to the faculties of the of the soul. Another uh, important is uh, about the nobility and sanctity of human life. They say that uh, man is the cream of the um, uh, God's uh, creation, and dealing with this uh, with this life should be taken very seriously and very cautiously. Only people uh, who have good knowledge about this life can treat people. Razi, for instance, says, says that من أصعب الأمور التحكيم على الأرواح بغير معرفة that you have control on people's lives without knowledge about, about this. And he, he said that, yes, some people would claim uh, that they are physicians 
although they are not actually because they want to show, they want to be important in society, but he said that some people do this uh, for because of misconceptions, moral misconceptions, that they want to get reward from God for healing people and treating their diseases. So when they know that someone has a specific disease that they hear that their, uh, for instance, uh, uh, relatives, uh, grandfather uh, had ever had uh, this uh, disease before, they would rush into and saying that you should take this and that uh, um, medicine because I know someone who did this and it succeeded. He said this is also quite problematic. So also um, um, jumping on medicine out of ihtisab, as they say, uh, looking for divine reward is also problematic. In order to uh, um, um, uh, fix the issue of professionalism, he wrote about reforming the profession itself like the work of Ar-Ruhawi and Adab al-Tabib. We have also some distinct works like Al-Maqala al salahiyah by the Jewish physician Ibn Jumayr and reforming the practice, the medical practice of the physician uh, um, introduce ideas, different ideas about examination of the physician. Uh, mihnet, usually they, they use the term mihnet and they depend on works of getting like uh, Mihnet al-Tabib al-Fadl, examination of the virtuous uh, physician, uh, warnings about charlatans, etc. Hisba. Uh, uh, generally, it's about public morality, but we can say in the medical profession, uh, something close to what we know nowadays, possibly the FDA, for instance, in the United States of America, uh, um, controlling the actual uh, practice of the physicians. Um, I got my concluding remarks uh, quickly. Uh, the, the, the concept of Virtuous physician or virtuousness of the physician is a complex one. Well, uh, is not simple, is multi layered. Uh, uh, so it has something to do with overall moral excellence, as we explained, in a specific understanding of the human nature. Uh, um, there are extra higher layer of moral excellence related to medicine in particular. Uh, 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 some requirements about medical professionalism, and uh, as I explained, this was not questioned in the past. There is interdisciplinarity. You need to have knowledge about religious morality, faith in God, uh, trust in God, um, uh, all this stuff, as I explained. And you need to read the works of the um, 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 authoritative figures in the Greek tradition. Galen, for instance, was uh, very central in this regard and his um, works, for instance, uh, he has a treatise في أن الطبيب الفاضل لا بد أن يجب أن يكون فيلسوفا that the virtuous physician also must be a philosopher. The examination of the virtuous physician, by the way, uh, these books, when, in, when, we, when we see them in English translation, the term virtuous is disappearing. We see the best physician or the excellent physician for reasons related to our modernity and our modern time. Uh, these uh, different layers or different factors of the virtuousness of the physician uh, would have a, a different impact and different emphasis when we speak about the role of the physician. So for instance, as a treating physician, we will see that Muslim jurists would uh, underscore the third one, the professionalism, then number one and number two. Why? Because they want to judge the liability and responsibility of the physician. Did he follow what they call adab al-san'a, which we can translate in our modern term, standard of care? Did they follow that or they didn't follow? So that they can judge the liability. But if you will approach the physician for other reasons, like an expert consultant, for instance, will I be exempted from fasting because I have uh, health problems or exempted from uh, um, ablution by using water because I have problems with water and I would do the dry ablution like the emmum, for instance, then they would stress more uh, number one and number two, overall moral excellence and, and second, and sometimes they would add to this the religious affiliation like Islam, for instance. Uh, so th these are things that I couldn't get into much details about them because of the limited time and in the modern time, the very last thing, we have to be very cautious by just quoting these and, and um, uh, um, classical discussions as if there is a very natural flow and continuity of the discussions. 
In the modern time, we don't speak about medicine as it was in the past. So this interrelatedness between the body and the soul, the body and the psyche, we don't have this, is not as straightforward as it was there, or maybe not even existing. And we don't speak even about the same ethics uh, that we uh, talk about. So this virtue um, um, uh, based ethics has been uh, sidelined and we are much more in uh, the direction of um, act based ethics, uh, judging the acts, not the actor, uh, um, like deontology and utilitarianism. And I suppose that's why modern translations about the term of Tabib al Fadl for people like Galen, we are using them nowadays to say the best or the excellent uh, uh, physician rather than the virtuous physician, because this agent based virtues uh, is not that central as it was in the in the past. I hope in the paper I'll be able to develop much more ideas, but if you have any quick questions, you are more than welcome. If you want to email me about your ideas, critical remarks, I'm also very happy. Thank you so much. Thank you for the paper. Um, as I said, we have like about 10 minutes now to ask questions. You can either ask them directly. If you raise your hand, um, you will be unmuted and you can ask the question. Um, there's also the possibility to ask your questions through chat. There's one question here. Can you see it? Uh, yourself I've seen or should some of the, um, the. Let me stop sharing so that I can see. Mm -hmm. question about the book Akhlaq al-Tabib is considered the first Arabic book that attempts to establish a professional code of honor for doctors. The book is in its origin a letter sent by Imam al-Razi to one of his students, he did not name his student, after he was appointed as a special doctor for a prince of his time. Did the West benefit from this book? Which book? Uh, Akhlaq al-Tabib. Yes, for 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 the etiquettes of the physician, the etiquettes of the physician, or the writings that try to uh, outline and delineate what makes a good physician, if we may say, uh, we have the most famous one is Adab al Tabib, uh, which has been translated by Martin Levy, I think, or Harvey, uh, uh, into English. The full book is translated into English. So this is one of the most famous. Uh, we have also um, uh, the work Akhlaq uh, al-Tabib, Ethics of the Physician by Ar-Razi, Abu Bakr Ar-Razi. Uh, um, uh, it's a small one, but, but a very, very, very good and condensed one, I would say. Uh, we also have uh, a book which usually not mentioned in this genre, but it is also very important contribution. Masalih al Abdani wal Anfus by uh, Abu Qasim al Balkhi, earlier than even um, uh, Al Ruhawi. Uh, um, um, there are some other references uh, here and there in different genres. I would also argue that Hisba uh, uh, works on public morality, made important contribution in, in this regard. Uh, works on Islamic jurisprudence in the fiqh. We have different chapters that help us in this regard. Uh, this is the kind of genres that I have gone through and I depended on them when I was uh, making this uh, uh, these ideas. So we have diverse works. Um, are there other questions? Would like I see answer. questions, but when I go to the chat or the question and answer, I don't see them. I don't know why. Where do you see the questions? Flashing, but then when I go there, I don't see them. I just posted a second question for all panelists. You should be able to see this in the chat. I've seen something from. You should raise your hand if you.
Uh, th th is there a question from you? Have you heard of the International Islamic Charter yes, of Medical Ethics from, prepared um, by Dr. Ali Muhammad Al Razaghi? What do you think of this charter? Um, yes, this is one of the very important uh, contributions in, in modern discussions on uh, bioethical issues. Uh, this is um, issued by the Islamic Organization for Medical Sciences, Nazam al Islamiya Ulum al based on a conference that they held in December 2004 and then they published the work in 2005. Uh, in this charter, unfortunately, we see uh, virtue ethics um, um, uh, quite sidelined, marginalized even. Uh, but this is reflecting the spirit of our time. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, the spirit of our time. We have the ethics focusing on the act, how to judge the act, the final product. But how to improve the machine generating the act, in this case, the psyche or the soul or even the character of the physician is much less. We have a turn to virtue ethics in the modern time in, in um, uh, bioethic mainstream secular bioethical discourse, um, not only secular, also religious uh, by people like uh, Pellegrino uh, um, in um, uh, Georgetown and others. Um, um, I, I dare to say that, uh, but I still have to continue my research. Uh, we don't have this term in in the in the modern Islamic bioethical discourse, for reasons which are quite different. But one of them is because of the dominance of the juristic tone uh, of the Islamic bioethical discourse. سيطرت الفقه على الخطاب الطبي الأخلاقي في التصور الإسلامي. There is a, there is a dominance for the Islamic jurisprudence. So it will it will focus on the act. But if you add other fields like philosophy, like um, adab, etc., yes, then virtue ethics will be much more highlighted. It will have much much better chances. But, but this is this is about analyzing the the, the modern uh, discourse. So the charter is important, <clears throat> uh, but again, when it comes to virtue ethics in uh, in medicine, it's not that important. I would say not, not that important. It, it, it highly, uh, hardly mentions that. There's one more question from Aisha Malik. Um, do, we, do you want to ask the question yourself, Aisha? It's like, do we need to distinguish between etiquette of the physician and ethics? Sorry, the what? The do difference? we need to distinguish between the etiquette, the adab of the tabib and uh, ethics in general? I yes, as I, as I said, if we speak about the virtuous physicians, there are different layers. One of them about moral excellence of the virtuous person in general, and this is in ethical writings. You find this in ethical writings in general, not necessarily about medical ethics. You find them almost everywhere in Islamic moral philosophy, which is modeled and based, uh, largely speaking, on the Greek model uh, of uh, moral thinking. But then these writings, when when these discussions on ethics in general and virtue ethics in general, when they move to the field of medical ethics, there are more demands in this regard. So they would link uh, the um, um, uh, temperaments of the body, and the health condition of the body, with the moral thinking. And then they would even assign specific organs and uh, uh, etc. And then they would add what I mentioned about uh, some values and virtues which are peculiar and specific to the medicine, like we are afraid that the physician would be uh, too much proud of himself. Yeah? So we have to stress humility. We are afraid that uh, because of the profession of medicine, you will run only after the rich people who can pay you good fees. So you have to think about justice and treating people equally and so on. So there is a very strong relationship that medical ethical discourse would go beyond the, the the relevant discourse in 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 works on ethics only. 